All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It is three o'clock, so we will go ahead and get started. We'll call this meeting of the Conroe ISD School Safety and Security Committee to order. Um, let me first start by thanking you all for being present today. I know that many of you are being pulled in a thousand different directions, and we're thankful that you were able to give uh, a few minutes to us this afternoon. We will do our best to be uh, efficient with today's meeting. I want to say welcome to Mr. Chris McCord. Chris is our uh, new Executive Director of Operations and a new addition to our committee since our last meeting. Um, also want to just say uh, thank you to Darren Hess. I see him on the call and all the work that the county's been doing. Um, certainly, I think the last you know, 12, 14 weeks, whatever it has been at this point, has been a, a truly an exercise in safety and security. I mean, I think we're getting firsthand um, experience and how to handle hard situations. And so, um, Thankful to Darren and, and everybody in the county. So we will jump right into our agenda. I believe that was sent to you. And our first item is uh, our consideration of the approval of the minutes from our December 10th, 2019 meeting. Those were sent via email. And I would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. All right. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Good to have you, Trustee Moore, on the call. Vice President Moore, my apologies. Uh, Thank you, sir. So we have a motion by Mr. Moore. Need a second? Second. All right, thank you, uh, Blake Locke. And any discussion on the minutes? Everything look okay? All right, all those in favor of accepting the minutes, say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Okay, hearing none, that passes, thank you. President Williams, welcome to the call. It's good to see you as well, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, item two, um, request approval of placement of bleeding control stations at district campuses. And uh, for many of our items today, Mr. Ethan Martin will be our um, presenter and he is as well on this first item. So Ethan, go ahead. In coordination with um, Ms. Robertson, the uh, bleeding stations are placed in every AD in all of our campuses. And then they're also uh, in the nurse's office. And that was chosen as the place where we would put those. So it just needs approval. Okay, thank you. I'll take a motion to, uh, to accept that recommendation. Move. Thank you, Mr. Williams. A second? Second. Second by Mr. Moore. Any uh, conversations, questions, or discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ethan. All right, item three, receive recommendations from the School Safety and Security Committee regarding the district's multi-hazard emergency operations plan. Ethan? Um, and that, as we have talked about before, we've been working on it for quite some time and it's near completion. And it's really, what we're doing is just taking what we already have and making it to where it's going to meet all of the things for Senate Bill 11, prevention, mitigation, preparedness, response, recovery, making it a little bit more streamlined so it's more uniform, easier to understand, and then bringing it up to add the hold for the standard response protocol. And that was sent out to everyone as well uh, in the draft version. So that draft was emailed by Ms. Godfrey. I have that uh, open here. Ethan, do you want to, are there any highlights that you would just want to point out or, or uh, significant changes that we would see? Uh, the there's really nothing significant um, other than our, in, our incident command system, just bringing it in to make it more uniform, adding the hold, which is going to become standard for the standard response protocol, even though that does sound um, odd, uh, bringing that in for all of our campuses, and then making it to where everything flows a little bit better as far as the table of contents is concerned, trying to group everything in those different sections um, to make it better suited for our campuses when they individualize them at each of their campuses. I know this has been quite an undertaking. Um, who all has, has worked on this, Ethan, with you? Oh, there has been a, a lot of people. I don't believe I could even name there. Everyone in this group, of course, and then um, myself, uh, Mr. Caker. There's been a ton of people. Ms. Gladys, Sarah's helped tremendously. There's been a lot of eyes and hands that have touched this document to get to where it is now. So um, everybody's time and input has been very appreciated. Okay, well, 
thank you. We appreciate everybody's hard work on it. Um, so we um, we see that the the recommended plan, Mrs. Gladys. Do we need? Does this need approval today, or is this still just receiving feedback? We need uh, the committee's feedback. If they have any recommendations or comments on the plan, that's what we're seeing okay. today. But we don't need today. Anything they would like to share? Um, questions, comments, concerns, recommendations? I would only add that having worked on it for several years, everybody has to remember it's a work in progress. So, um, you know, even though we, we think we have something, it, things change and situations change. And so it's being tweaked and looked at all the time. Yes, thank you. It's a it's an unbelievable undertaking, and you know when we first started writing this, I doubt that we would have written anything in it about a global pandemic, and yet here we are with a new chapter. Um, so you never know. Uh, Ethan, other? this is Darren. If you if you'd like, I can push this over to uh, the county fire marshal's office. Um, had them review the fire section, and then they are also the bomb team, bomb squad for the county, and have them provide some input on your suspicious packages. Um, if you'd like for me, I can do that. Yeah, um, that's good. I know that the the guidance that we use now is it, it comes from the postal service. So, but any other input would be greatly appreciated. Okay, I'll hand that over to Kevin Bates. I, you may know Kevin, and I'll get some feedback from him, and then and then get it back to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Appreciate Darren. Yes, glad to help. Okay, any other feedback on that? What is our timeline moving forward on that document? Um, really, it needs to be completed and to where at least I have the PDF version of it in time to get it loaded into our online system for the campuses so then they can take that document and then individualize it and put and add their plans where needed in each of the sections that we've outlined where they'll have to have that campus specific information. So um, as far as the timeline, it's difficult to say, but as soon as possible would be wonderful. <laughs> right, okay, all right. But at some point this summer, really, I mean, we need to yes, have sir. it ready for campus. If we could shoot for by, by July to get it in there, it'd be nice. Okay. We'd be pushing it, wouldn't it, Ethan? But if we waited till July 1, yeah, I mean, that I, I can get it done. I mean, I could get it done if you gave it to me on July 15th, but just as soon as we could would be great. So, but yeah, July 1's fine. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, once again, appreciate everybody's hard work on that. And uh, thanks for your feedback. If you have any other uh, feedback along the way, if you can just get that to Ethan as soon as possible, that would be great. All right. Um, we don't have any items today for closed session, uh, so we will move on to item six. Provide an update regarding safety and security audits of district facilities and receive information from the School Safety and Security Committee to conduct audits. So, Mr. Martin? Um, every three years, every campus um, with the school district has to have a safety and security audit completed on it. The, the, this year was the final year of that three year rotation. Um, every school or every campus and every facility within the district has been completed within that window. And then every, every year, a, a smaller report of, of just normal or of common things that have been found through those audits is then provided to the actual school board. And then on the third year is when the school safety center sends out their DAR to the district annual reporting. And then I go in and fill out all of that information, then goes to the school safety center, and then they put all of the state's information into one big report that is eventually just is sent out. Um, so that is where we are with that, but we are complete. And then the new cycle begins this coming school year. And, and I don't, I, I'm, I certainly don't want you to share anything that would, would publicly highlight any vulnerabilities or put any of our campuses at risk. That's, that's not something that's privy to the board in closed session or this committee in closed session, but are, are there, just general overarching themes that that you could share with this committee that are appropriate to be shared publicly. 
Yes, and for the most part, all of our campuses and facilities do a wonderful job just due to the frequency that communication goes out and that we're in the buildings, you know, providing feedback. They do a really good job. So it's really just minor things, just making sure that, you know, doors are locked where they need to be locked, uh, keeping materials not stacked within the limit that they have to be in the sprinkled buildings and then the ones that aren't just within that that limit and then properly securing personal items. Small things like that that are easily addressed. Nothing that's out of the ordinary. Okay. Thank you, Ethan. Um, any questions from any uh, committee members? And there's a weather alarm going off in the next office. I'm going to go turn it off. Okay. Yeah, I just got dinged on the... Yeah, it's getting ugly out there. I'm looking out the window. It's getting dark, darker and darker. Look, look at look out over Chris's shoulder there. You can see it coming. Uh, it's behind you, Chris. Uh, <laughs> um, it's actually worse to the west. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, hopefully we don't lose power. We'll try to get through this. Before we, before we I just got a power. text from Darren's office on a severe weather alert. So thank you, Darren. <laughs> there you go. Dar We're holding Darren up. He's probably got real work he's going to do. So, okay. All right, we'll move, we'll move forward. Item seven, review of reports to be submitted to the Texas School Safety Center. Ethan? That is, um, and I don't know if it has been sent out, it's that DAR report that we have to send in. I've gone through and filled in all of the information at the Safety Center once. It's very, for lack of a better way of putting it, it's very generic. It just wants to know whether we're moving certain things. And we have done all of that. And then towards the end, it's just asking for COVID-19 response from our school district. And so all of those um, questions have been answered appropriately as well. And when are those reports due, Ethan? Um, it is, it's, they've extended the window for districts because I don't think everyone's done it. And I think it's in August is the date because there's a lot of districts that haven't even completed their safety audits yet. So they've extended the window. But I think the original date was July, mid-July, that that report needed to be sent. And all, just to clarify, all of ours have already been submitted? Uh, well, no, they haven't been submitted. They've been completed. The report okay. is done. It just hasn't been submitted because it hasn't gone through um, this committee yet. Okay. So uh, after today, then they could be submitted? Or yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Any questions on those reports from any committee members? Okay, uh, Ms. Galatis, I see this says review of reports. Do we need to vote on that so these can be submitted to be accepted by the committee or? Uh, no, I think we need to have documentation on this that they did, you know, had an opportunity to review the information that we would include in the report and to provide any information that we might need uh, to include in the report. Perfect, okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Ethan. Uh, we appreciate all the work you're doing. Um, for those of you that don't know, Ethan is a is is a wonderful behind the scenes kind of guy. Many of the great things that happen around here happen because Ethan really manages and makes them happen. From food drives that happen in parking lots, he's often the guy that's that's helping to make those happen as well. And and so we're just thankful for Ethan and all his work. Um, up next will be item eight: receive information regarding the district's COVID nineteen plan and. Speaking of a great person that works so hard behind the scenes, um, our, our lead nurse, Barbara Robertson, really oversees all of our student health and, and not just student health because it, it encompasses uh, not just the 65,000 students, but also 8,000 employees and, and all the guests that come onto our buildings. And she works tirelessly with the county, uh, is a great communicator and a great partner. Um, with all of the healthcare experts in the county and then brings that information back and, and synthesizes it and uh, puts it into actionable items for us as a school district. And so, um, Barbara, if you'd like to share our, our current, I say current, COVID-19 plan because it could be different tomorrow and it will be different next week, I'm sure. But uh, it's all ever-changing. Yes, thank you, Dr. Null. It is ever-changing. We continue to monitor the situation, not only in our county, but across the state and the nation and the world, because we all know how quickly something in another country can affect us. And so we really try to um, keep all of that in mind. Um, we're in constant contact with Montgomery County and through public health and through the hospital district to make sure that we're aware of what's going on in the county and that the county is aware of 
for what we're doing because we are the largest employer in the county and so we want to make sure that that what we do is um, is evidence-based and, and measured so our mitigation strategies that we've been using since we have been closed um, in um, since since spring break have really lessened the impact of our um, of COVID-19 on our workforce. So we have limited people in the buildings. We have um, stepped up our our hygiene, and we're you know asking everyone to wear a mask when they enter the building. Uh, physical distancing and working through all of those logistics in, in all of our buildings and all of those efforts along with tireless custodial help has really uh, lessened that impact on our workforce and moving forward this summer we're taking very measured steps to bring employees and students um, in limited um, amount back into our buildings and we feel that with the protocols that we have in place, that we um, will be successful in, in doing that safely and limiting the amount of, of uh, transmission of the virus in our facilities and throughout the county. Um, we start with graduations next week, weather willing, and these are really the largest um, uh, get-togethers that anyone in, in this area has had since March, and so we really um, have had a whole team effort of administrators and nurses and athletic trainers, custodial communication, police, everybody on board in, um, in developing and implementing these plans so that we can safely celebrate our graduates next week. And um, as we look forward to next year and what all that will entail, you know, that's a couple of months out. And we really don't know what that's going to look like, but we are charged with trying to figure that out now. It's certainly going to look different, but different doesn't mean bad or wrong. It just means different. And so um, our employees and our students and our families have shown this resilience the last two and a half months that I believe we can uh, continue to build on and, and make next year's success in whatever way that looks like. So our plans for next year involve uh, continuing our mitigation strategies, but they will also um, add data tracking of absent or um, and ill employees and students and um, a COVID-19 workforce testing program for symptomatic employees, um, robust contact tracing so that we can identify and isolate those um, students or those employees that are ill. And all of these efforts are to have continuity of learning and to reduce the amount of, of full district closure. What we would look at would be a, a closure of a grade or of a campus rather than um, our entire district. And that is what uh, Texas model and, and the nation's model is really looking at as we move forward is not another complete shutdown. It, and that's gonna be data tracking, which we have really been doing successfully with our SSO COVID-19 check-in for our employees. And we are working with technology to have something like that for students. And so everyone working together, I, I really believe that if anybody can do this, Connor ISD can do this. Thank you, Barbara. And certainly what a great job that Barbara and everybody associated um, with this has done. As Barbara mentioned, you know, next year is, is um, you know, we're, we're 10 weeks, 11 weeks out on the count, but it's, it's a long ways. And if you, if you think, uh, where we were 10 weeks ago from today, um, we couldn't imagine to have gone through what we went through and be where we are today. And so really for us to sit here today and try to project exactly where we'll be on August 12th when we return to school is impossible to do. Um, but we're running a lot of different scenarios so that we'll be ready. And at some point when TEA gives us the rules that are associated um, with opening school next year, we, we will have plans ready to um, to meet those expectations and keep our kids and employees safe, but also uh, come back to school. I think it's all of our goal is that we need to return to school and we, we need children in school. And, uh, you know, our remote learning process has been um, as good as it could have been given the situation as quickly as we had to turn it around, but it's not the same as uh, children to figure out how to do that very safely. Um, would open, uh, be happy to entertain any questions for Barbara. Uh, she is a wealth of knowledge. And if you, if you have any questions, we'd be happy to hear them uh, at this time. Oh, 
Okay. And I'm not seeing any. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Robertson. We certainly appreciate you. Um, but that will conclude our agenda items for today. Uh, our, our final item is confirmed date and time of our next meeting. Our next meeting meeting will follow the same format via Zoom, uh, just because we don't know exactly where we'll be. And, and so um, it will be via Zoom on August the 4th at 3 p.m. So August 4th at 3, and once again, we'll send out reminders to everyone. Um, we are mandated, just as, as a reminder, we're mandated to have um, one of these meetings each semester, correct, uh, Mrs. Gladys, and in the summer as well, correct? So um, today's meeting you know, meets our criteria for the spring semester and our August 4th will meet the criteria for our summer meeting. And then we will, at that point, um, look into fall dates and figure out what makes sense for us at that time. So um, any other questions or comments for the group today? Okay, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Okay, thank you, President Williams. Wish you all uh, a very safe day. If you are working here in this building, don't rush out this afternoon because the weather is ugly. So stay safe, stay where you are, finish up your work, and let this uh, let this storm pass. So thank you all very much. Thank you, everyone.